Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for giving me this uh, opportunity to uh, be part of this session and uh, uh, present uh, the work done by CODATU in the field of uh, climate change. Um, last year, in November, uh, CODATU, together with AFD, the French funding agency, has published a book um, called uh, Impacts of Urban Transport on Climate Change. So um, the executive manager of CODATU, Julien Aller, was supposed to come and give that presentation, but he had to rush and go to uh, COP22 in Marrakesh. So I'll try to do my best and uh, present the work uh, done by him. Um, so CO2 emissions in the transport sector are mainly due to uh, road transport. Uh, in developing countries, motorization is the main factor of energy consumption and uh, greenhouse gas emission. So regarding the Paris Agreement on climate, uh, there are two main questions. One is what should be done to mitigate emissions from transport sector, which represent about, uh, as uh, Anuita said, around one fourth of energy related G, uh, GHG emissions. And the second question is what can be done especially for urban transport? Uh, when we say urban transport, we consider uh, passenger as well as uh, good transport. So it represents, among those one fourth, it represents about 40 to 50 percent of the transport emissions. So there's actually a huge potential for mitigation. And that's also a sector where local authorities can lead the transport transformation. And that's a sector where there are many co-benefits, as also mentioned uh, in the earlier presentations. So in that slide, uh, it shows the four-wheeler ownership compared to the per capita income. Uh, for example, if we take um, uh, Italy, uh, Italy and uh, South Korea, uh, for the same level of GDP, let's say uh, 30,000 uh, GDP, uh, North Korea has uh, twice or even three times less uh, motorization rate. The, it's here the square and the triangle. Uh, and the same example is there for, uh, between Chile and Malaysia. Uh, at about 15,000 GDP. Um, so it's still possible, this graph shows that it's still possible for emerging countries to choose their path of development. So uh, that's a basic and it was uh, presented by Mr. Mishra uh, in the introduction. Um, usually to measure sustainable uh, urban mobility, we use uh, that the scheme of avoid, shift, and improve, that approach. Avoid means uh, avoid the need to travel. So make the system more efficient. Shift means uh, shift to more environmental friendly means of transport. So make the trip itself more efficient. And then improve um, means improve the uh, efficiency of the vehicle, of the technology, of the fuel. So make the vehicle more efficient. Uh, this uh, study was done by uh, the International Energy Agency. Um, and from this uh, study, it shows that uh, there are two main uh, uh, tools that we can use to reduce emissions in the, in the sector of urban transport. So here they have uh, highlighted efficiency of transport and efficiency of uh, fuel, low carbon fuel. But it doesn't talk at all or about avoidance shift. So that study was quite uh, criticized and then they, they've started working again on that concept to focus more on the avoidance shift uh, tools. Um, so this is, uh, I think, known to most of uh, you. It shows the C CO2 emissions from uh, transport in different cities. So cities in the US, in Canada, in Australia, have between two and eight tons of CO2 emissions per capita. And then we come to Europe and Asia, which has between one and two and less than one ton for uh, Asian countries. Uh, so that shows also the, the way cities have developed. In the US, they have huge uh, cities where, uh, with a huge urban sprawl, where people are traveling for one hour, two hours to reach office. Or, so that, that's how uh, this uh, CO2 emission difference uh, is, is uh, explained. So then, uh, that's, a, that's another example in the same line, in the same idea. That's the way Atlanta developed and the way Barcelona, Atlanta in the US and Barcelona in Spain. So for the same population, it's about 5 million inhabitants, they have 25 times less 
sprawled and 10 times less CO2 emissions. Again, um, this is a study from ITF um, showing, uh, how would, uh, showing those two kind of development paths. One development, one uh, favoring private, private transport, and the other one favoring public transport. Yeah. So that shows the effect that it can have on, um, on model share. Again, in the same idea, uh, that's a, a graph showing how Shanghai and uh, Beijing uh, uh, developed. So Shanghai, between 2002 and 2006, uh, kept the same kind of uh, uh, model share and same level of CO2 emission per capita, uh, whereas uh, Beijing has almost doubled the, this level. Um, a last study done by ITDP, uh, showing again uh, uh, how a high shift scenario can uh, improve the, uh, the model shift. So if we, come, uh, if we take the United States, for the baseline, uh, the, the middle graph is the baseline 2050, and then the high shift scenario. So in almost all cities, we can divide by two uh, the use of private cars. And here, this graph is very interesting because it shows how multimodal integration is also a tool to uh, reduce uh, emissions in the city. So, uh, as it was said in previous uh, uh, presentation, urban mobility is not only about climate. There are many other co-benefits, uh, uh, many other things we can act on, reason to act. So the first one, of course, is accessibility of people. But the sec second is also reducing the local externalities, air pollution, red, uh, road transport debt, congestion, spending on infrastructure, fuels. So that's where the E came. So we were uh, using the avoid, shift, and improve uh, scheme. And uh, in a recent publication from Kodatu, the E uh, was proposed. Uh, e means enable enable uh, effective and responsible governance system with adequate uh, institution, remon, uh, human resources, financing. Um, so the, um, Kodatu has recently launched an uh, initiative together with GIZ and other uh, international partners uh, willing to develop sustainable urban mobility plans. So that initiative is called Mobilize Your City. Uh, so it's, 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 um, um, this approach has been taken from, uh, has been adapted from ELTIS. Uh, the idea is to prepare well, improve mobility and quality of life, anal analyze those problems and opportunities, then identify measures and plans and come to implementation. Because most of the time the problem in the CMP is that the measures are identified, but they are not implemented. The, uh, me, the means are not given for implementation of that plan. So planning an implementation process with a comprehensive view on mobility issues. Uh, so as I said, that's the mobility, Mobilize Your City uh, initiative, which is being launched uh, today in COP22 in Marrakesh. Uh, in India, three cities have been identi identified to benefit from that uh, scheme. Uh, Kochi, Ahmedabad, and uh, uh, Nagpur. Uh, so cities can still apply to this initiative uh, on the Mobilize Your City website. Um, uh, so if, as a conclusion, that will be a similar conclusion from uh, the other presentation, um, th that's where we can, we can act. Have a comprehensive approach on mobility issues through those sustainable urban mobility plans. Uh, develop public transport oriented policies, implement the action plans from the CMP, and measure the CO2 emissions to give access to public funds for uh, urban mobility policies. So thank you, and uh, 